Hello, I'm Wolf Kassmeyer. I want to thank you for joining us with this video and for the past videos that you've watched. I'm an attorney. I live in the French Quarter in New Orleans. And like you, I serve as a director on the board of a bank. What I want to do is make you familiar with certain principles that you should follow in your role as a director of a financial institution. What we're discussing today are principles that are based upon guidelines developed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and endorsed by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, and the Office of Thrift Supervision. All of us are serving on a board because of our accomplishments and our expertise. You have to understand that we as directors can be subject to common law liability and statutory and regulatory liability if we do not adequately fulfill our responsibilities on the board of directors. We can also be subject to orders given to us by our regulator. And those orders can get quite detailed in telling us what to do. The board has to oversee the conduct of the financial institution's business. The board should select and retain competent management. And I'm not just talking about your president and CEO, although of course that's a primary concern, but also executive management hirings. You may want to take some interest in their qualifications. Establish with your management your financial institution's long and short-term business objectives. Adopt operating policies to help you achieve these objectives in a legal and sound manner. Strategic planning is very important for a board to undertake. You might want to consider taking a retreat. Take a half a day or a day with executive management. Go off premises from your financial institution and spend a lot of time working on strategic planning. Monitor operations to ensure that they are controlled adequately and are in compliance with laws and policies. A lot of this monitoring is done through your committee work. You're also receiving board reports before every meeting. Review them carefully. Oversee your financial institution's business performance. Again, look at the board reports that are being provided to you. And finally, ensure that your financial institution helps to meet the community's credit needs. CRA requires that a financial institution demonstrate that its facilities are serving the convenience and needs of the communities in which the financial institution is chartered and is doing business. The convenience and needs of communities include the need for credit services as well as deposit services. Bank Board Advisor has a video that's going to help you consider CRA, Community Reinvestment Act, and your obligations to meet these credit needs and credit services. Another area that I want to talk to you about is the need to maintain independence as a director. You need to work and cooperate with your management, but you also need to exercise independent judgment in evaluating management's actions and competence. A critical evaluation of all issues brought before the board is absolutely essential. Directors who routinely approve management decisions without using their own informed judgment are not really serving their financial institution, their stockholders, or their community. Ladies and gentlemen, keep informed. Attend as many board and committee meetings as possible. It may not always be possible to be there in presence, so you could possibly attend by conference phone or other media. Find out if that's acceptable in your bylaws and or state law. Review your auditor's findings and recommendations and communications that you receive from the regulators. Keep up on national and the local economy. What is happening in the communities that your financial institution is serving? And stay abreast of industry trends and new or revised laws and or regulations that affect the industry and your particular financial institution. You might consider briefings by management, auditors, local counsel. Please ensure that you have qualified management. If ever you should have a question or a concern regarding the performance of your CEO or senior management, it should be addressed directly. Your CEO should have an open door policy with his or her board members. If you get an unsatisfactory answer to your concern, you might want to discuss your concern with your other directors and what are their thoughts. Keep in mind if you're hiring a new CEO, it's necessary to act quickly. Ability, integrity, experience, the most important qualifications for a CEO. Supervise management. This has to be broad supervision. I'm not talking about micromanaging. You have to have trust in your CEO and executive management. To do this, establish policies that are clearly written and comprehensible by employees of the financial institution and juries. 
If a policy is introduced into evidence and those in court don't really understand what it is intended to say, it's going to look bad for your financial institution. On the other hand, if it's clearly written so that anybody can understand what was expected of a certain person, then you're in great shape. At a minimum, your policy should cover loans, including internal loan review procedures, investments, asset liability funds management, profit planning and budget, capital planning, internal controls, compliance, audit program, conflicts of interest, and a code of ethics. Meaningful management reports have to be given to you far enough in advance with enough detail and frequency depending upon the financial institution's circumstances. Generally, these reports should include income and expenses, capital outlays and adequacy, loans and investments made, past due and negotiated loans and investments, problem loans, their present status and what is the workout program, allowances for possible loan loss, concentrations of credit, losses and recoveries on sales, collections, or other asset disposition, funding activities, and management of interest rate risk. Performance in all of the above should be compared to past and peer group performance. Now also, you should have reports on insider transactions that benefit directly or indirectly. You're controlling shareholders, you the directors, executive officers, or related interests. You should have activities that are undertaken to ensure compliance with applicable laws, such as lending limits, Bank Secrecy Act, consumer requirements, and any other significant compliance problems that your financial institution may be facing. And they should include any extraordinary development likely to impact the integrity, safety, or profitability of your financial institution. In your supervisory role as a board member, you should establish a mechanism for independent third-party review of compliance with policies and procedures, laws and regulations, asset quality, the accuracy of management reports to the board. And this review may be from auditors, either internally reporting to the board or external auditors, or maybe even an examining committee made up of members of the board itself. An annual external audit is desirable. The board should review the auditor's findings with management and then should monitor management's efforts to resolve any identified problems. In discharging general oversight responsibilities, the board or an audit committee of the board should have direct responsibility for hiring, firing, evaluating auditors, and should have access to the financial institution's regular corporate counsel and staff as required. And in some situations, Outside directors may wish to consider employing independent counsel, accountants, or other experts at the financial institution's expense to advise them on special problems arising in the exercise of the board's oversight function. I cannot stress enough that you should heed supervisory reports or supervisory correspondence. Track progress in addressing problems. Discuss any issues of concern with your examiners. They are there to help you. Finally, avoid preferential transactions. Be careful of transactions with insiders and their related interests. If you permit preferential transactions to take place, you're opening yourself to civil and criminal liability, and you may be exposing your financial institution to greater than ordinary risk of loss. Again, I'm Wolf Kassmeyer. Thank you so much for viewing this video. We look forward to seeing you next time on Bank Board Advisor.